morning everyone. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I'm Ellen. I'm Leslie. <laughs> Welcome to our Facebook Live. Today we are going to be talking um, with our naturopath Leslie about SIBO and what that means, um, how to treat it, what symptoms it might um, be causing and a whole bunch of things to do with SIBO. Um, so Leslie, first off, um, what exactly does SIBO mean and what does it stand for? So it stands for small intestinal bacterial overgrowth and it's kind of where the bacterial um, population has either overgrown in the small intestine or bacteria that was supposed to be just in the lower intestine, which could be good bacteria even, um, mm -hmm. has migrated up to the small intestine where it's not supposed to be. Not supposed um, to be. We're not meant to have anywhere near the quantity of bacteria in the small intestine is what we've got in the large. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, interesting. And so with that, what kinds of symptoms would you normally see so in a patient? It can be, the biggest, hugest symptom is bloating. But mm -hmm. having said that, um, someone can have SIBO and not have any bloating at all. But they usually have um, bloating and it will often be a lot higher up. You know, they, they walk around mm. looking pregnant. They might have um, different size clothes to accommodate it, especially after eating. Um, and I think it's between 60 and 80% of IBS sufferers actually have SIBO. Wow, that's so it can be a big cause of their bloating and their hypersensitivity. Mm. Um, yeah. And what about things like, um, I've heard of people getting um, burping or reflux and things yeah, like that. Yeah, there's, there's heaps of like um, heartburn, reflux, there's even, um, you can have SIBO and not have any gut symptoms at all, but there's also symptoms that people would never consider like um, fibromyalgia, it's mm -hmm. huge in fibromyalgia, rosacea, mm -hmm. restless leg syndrome, mm -hmm. um, thyroid disorders, um, yeah, mm. there's heaps. Yeah, cool. And um, for anyone listening, if you have any questions for Leslie or me, just comment in the sections and we'll um, try to answer it for you. Um, and in terms of how to test for SIBO, how do you test for it? So when the bacteria, um, they, they eat, they feed off um, fibres and things like that. So you can test with either lactulose, which is a, like a sugary solution, or glucose, which is another mm -hmm. sugary solution, or even fructose, or all three. And when the bacteria feed off those substrates, they actually produce a gas. Mm -hmm. And that gas is absorbed back into the bloodstream, and then we breathe it out through the lungs. Mm. So the testing is done through a breath test. Right. Yeah, very, very strict diet um, for 24 hours um, preceding the breath test, and then a breath test where you breathe into a, a fancy looking tube <laughs> every 20 minutes for three, to three hours, sometimes just two hours, but three hours. Right. Yeah. And is there a difference between, because maybe some people would have done the breath test for things like H. pylori before? Yeah. That yeah. would be a common one? Yeah. Yeah. So um, this one tests for um, two particular um, gases, so it's testing for methane. Um, which would be a methane SIBO, or it's um, tested for hydrogen. Mm -hmm. So they tell us different types of SIBO, and they need treatments in really different ways, quite. Oh, different treatments. Yeah. Okay, awesome. And to do with how to actually um, treat SIBO, what kinds of things would you be looking at in terms of diet, herbs, things like that? Yeah. So. Um, Obviously, SIBO is actually a consequence of something else, and so you've really got to find what that, that cause was to start with, which could be, um, it could be a food poisoning that you had 20 years ago, um, you know, if it was a really mm. bad food poisoning that lasted more than 24 hours and you was, you know, violently vomiting mm. and diarrhea. Upset that um, bacteria. Mm, exactly. And then also um, anything that affects motility. So mm -hmm. if you've got low thyroid and it's affecting your um, peristaltic action in the bowel, um, mm. if you've had an operation and you've got scar tissue, there's um, what we call a migrating motor complex that mm. goes every Fancy. 90 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and that keeps, it's like a wave that just keeps the bacteria from moving up into the small intestine. So anything that um, can affect the gut, so like scar tissue, operations, bacterial overgrowth, any, anything that upsets the gut really, mm. can affect that migrating motor complex. So you've got to find out what affected it in the first place and fix mm -hmm. that too. So scar tissue, 
um, from operations. Yeah, yeah, that can all sort of put pressure and and push things up. Where it shouldn't um, be. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So once you've once you've found the cause, um, you're kind of treating the cause and the SIBO at the same time. And depending on whether it's methane or whether it's hydrogen mm. or even hydrogen sulfide, which there's mm. a test coming out for very soon. Um, the treatments are very different, um, but there's very specific herbs that will treat and kill the bacteria. That particular bacteria yeah, in that yeah. area. And that also can be yeast as well, which doesn't necessarily show up on the tests, mm. but you can treat both at the same time. Yeah, and I guess something interesting is the way that even if it is the particular herb for the SIBO, is that some of the supplements that we use in the clinic for more lower bowel bacterial dysbiosis yeah. is that the capsules are made so that they get down into the lower bowel before they break open, so then the oils and different kinds of components can be used in the lower bowel rather than in the small bowel. So I guess that would be different in how you would treat it yeah. if you use... Um, liquid herbs if you use capsules if you use probiotics that kind of thing yeah definitely, yeah. definitely. and we also need to um, take into consideration that that migrating motor complex might not have been working so we need to simulate that as well so that mm. needs to be going on at the same time and then similar to um, lower bowel dysbiosis um, we need to heal the gut so there's a mm. lot of gut healing goes on um, at particular times in the treatment protocol and um, stimulate digestion and everything like mm. that as well because we don't want anything sitting around rotting and fermenting and feeding these bacteria that we're trying to kill off yeah yep so things like enzymes would be important right yeah yep yep and um, in terms of the um, the actual peristalsis would that go back to things like vagus nerve yep yep and so there's lots of different weird and wacky exercises you can do to stimulate the vagus nerve. So you can do this um, gargling exercise, but it's got to be to the point where your eyes are watering. Um, humming, there's mm -hmm. um, humming. Um, there's a gag thing, you can make yourself gag and that mm -hmm. sort of thing. There's lots of different um, yeah. things you can do. Um, but yeah, it's really important to get it all working. And where the enzymes, um, the uh, microvilli, the brush border enzymes in between all the microvilli, if you've got SIBO, that gas actually damages those. Mm. So you can also then get things like histamine intolerance, mm. salicylate intolerance, problems with um, mm. bile food acids and so oxalates, yeah. food yeah, tons of food sensitivities. Um, yeah. So there's a lot to look at. Mm. <laughs> And I would say that with SIBO, um, it's something that isn't normally diagnosed straight away as well. No, no. and yeah. it's also, it can be tricky because it, it um, crosses over with so many other symptoms from the lower bowel as well. And, and mm. like I was saying, um, you, you can get no symptoms at all, but you might have fibromyalgia or rosacea or something like that. Things on um, the outside. Yeah, yeah. Um, More systemic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and what about foods? Because I've heard of um, quite strict SIBO diets. Yeah, the diet is very strict for it um, in the short term. I mean, it's not a it's not a diet that you want to carry on for months and months. That's for sure. Um, but it's very very strict, and it takes out your FODMAPs, so your um, fermentable oligosaccharides, disaccharides, mm -hmm. polyols, <laughs> and I've forgotten the yeah. <laughs> but yeah. So right they're fermentable <laughs> fibres in your food. So um, things that we really consider to be healthy, like broccoli and cauliflower, can be more detrimental. Yeah, they can really. Um, so they, yeah. So it's a very specific protocol. Um, yeah. To stop feeding those bacteria while we get them back yeah. under control. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Um, anything else to add for zebra that we missed, Leslie? Ooh, it's probably tons, but I can't think <laughs> off the top of my head. <laughs> Great. Well, if anyone has questions for um, Leslie or I regarding SIBO, um, just comment in the um, comment section of this video and we'll get back to you um, to be able to answer your questions. But thank you for listening. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. <laughs>